Hey everybody and welcome back to the Blenderman Renderman for Blender tutorial series. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to give a shout out to the Renderman for Blender developers, especially Brian Savory, for just fixing a lot of issues really quickly, helping me figure out why it was crashing so much in the last tutorial, and for overall just releasing updates to the plugin every day, every other day, whenever, but very quickly. It's very impressive and I am very happy with them. But anyway, today I wanted to go over a very simple feature, this tutorial will be fairly short, that uh, most Blender exclusive users might not be familiar with because this feature is not available in Cycles. That feature is light linking. What this allows you to do is take a light and link it to one object or a few objects and have it not affect other objects in your scene. This is incredibly useful for all sorts of purposes like rim lighting or making kickers or even just having a light only affect the specular on an eye, which is prevalent in a lot of character rigs, for instance. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So let's pretend that we have a very simple scene. Go ahead and give this a quick render. You'll see we have a sphere with a shadow on a plane. But let's pretend that we wanted to give this sphere some rim lighting to pop it off the background and make it a bit more interesting. We could do that by adding an area light, putting it back here, adding a Renderman node tree and upping the exposure to say six or something. So if we come up here and hit start interactive rendering again, you'll notice, wow, we have our we have a rim on our sphere, but it's also affecting our ground plane and casting this shadow that we really don't want. So we can fix that using light linking and have the light only affect the sphere. So to do that is incredibly easy. All we have to do is come over to the plane, go to the objects panel and say light linking and this is area. So come to our plane and we click area and we turn illuminate to off. I'm going to move this up here just so you can see it a little bit better. But anyway, we have area, it's forced off for the plane. So now if we give this a quick render, uh oh, it is not working. Hmm. Let's figure this one out. We have lamp, we have area, but the shader tree is area.001. Let's try that. So if we come back to our plane and change this to area.001, which is the node tree, and start interactive rendering, then you'll notice now we have our light and it is only affecting the sphere. It's not affecting anything else. We can move it forward, back, but we're getting a rim on our sphere now, which is helping pop it off the background. This is not the best rim in the world. Uh, we could even scale it up some to get it to go around the sphere a bit more. And up the exposure to say eight or something. But anyway, uh, you can see that this could be useful for characters and popping them off the backgrounds in your environments. And this is all great and very intuitive and user friendly. But let's pretend for a second that you have a ton of objects. It could be an absolute pain to go and turn it off for that object, that object, that object, and you could potentially have hundreds of objects in your scene. So I have a second scene set up to demonstrate how we would approach that. Let's come over here and open light linking 002. Here you'll see I have three monkeys and a bunch of planes making up this room. So let's say we want a rim light to only affect this monkey. Well, first and foremost, this is our scene. It's very simple. Uh, we can probably brighten up our subsurface shader just a bit by uh, changing the weights here a bit so we can give this a second to catch up. Because they're, they're a little bit dark. But anyway, on the monkeys, let's go ahead and change this to like 1.2, brighten that up, change this to 1. Now they're a little bit brighter, uh, not too much, but whatever. So, let's pretend that we want a rim light on just this monkey. I don't know why you would ever do that, because that would be horribly unnatural, but it is also very easy to do. We can stop our interactive render. We can come over here, add an area light pointed at our monkey. Let's make sure it's lined up with our monkey. Or a Suzanne for those Blender purists out there. We can add a Renderman node tree. Set the exposure to 6, for instance, and give it a quick render. 
you notice we have the exact same problem where it's affecting everything, but we only want it to affect the center Suzanne. So give this just a second to catch up here. So to have it only affect the center one, as I've said, is incredibly easy. All we have to do is come over to our lamp, uncheck the illuminates by default, so now it's not illuminating at all, it is creating no light. Then we come to our monkey, or Suzanne, come over here to the objects panel, come to the light linking panel, hit plus, I'm going to move this up, uh, come over here to light, we want the area, and then we illuminate on. So now the lamp is off by default, but then we turned it on specifically for this Suzanne right here. So let's go ahead and give that a render. So now we have this lamp right here, specifically affecting Suzanne in the center. And this is again an ugly rim light, so we're gonna fix that really fast after it catches up. Okay, great. So now we can scale this up to make it affect more of it. And we can up the intensity to eight-ish. So that gives us a nice strong kicker or rim or whatever you wanna call it on our center monkey. But the light is still in the scene and that's pretty annoying. So what we're gonna do is stop interactive render, come down here, uh, and we're going to turn off the light primary visibility in the lighting panel. So now, just those few simple steps and we have one light affecting just the center monkey and everything else is completely unaffected just with a, a few switches. Very easy to do, incredibly useful. So applications for this, as I said, could include rim lighting. You could use it for kickers. You could use it to make one object in a scene sort of glowing. Or you could use it as a specular on an eye on a character. All incredibly useful use, uh, uses or purposes for it. Uh, it's not available in cycles, which it really should be. Uh, but. It's just a great feature that is available on RenderMan and incredibly easy to use. Whew. So that about sums it up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this short tip or tutorial and I hope you find use for it. Oh, uh, there is one downfall to rim lighting in RenderMan or light linking in RenderMan. That's if you have a really strong rim light uh, attached to just one object it will bounce on the scene still. Like it'll bounce off of him and still cause indirect lighting on the scene. It's not a huge downfall. It's just something to keep in mind if you have a character that's close to a wall or something, you might have some unwanted light leakage. I'm not sure if there's a way to turn that off currently. I could not find a way to turn it off. Uh, but anyway, that about sums up our short tutorial. I hope you got something out of it and I hope you can take light linking and apply it to your scenes. It can really take your lighting to the next level. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you subscribe for future tutorials. I'm going to try to do one every week or at least every other week on RenderMan for Blender. Anyway, I will catch you all next time. Have a great rest of your day.